Welcome. In this video, we're going to discuss the negation of the conditional. Suppose we have the simple statements P, it is sunny, and Q, I am riding my bike. Then first of all, what is the conditional statement? Well, it would be, if it is sunny, then I am riding my bike. So what would be the negation? Well, one way to write the negation would be, it is not the case that if it is sunny, then I am riding my bike. But is there an easier, equivalent way of writing that? Well, in order to find out, let's look at our truth table to see where the conditional statement is false. Well, we notice that it occurs precisely when P is true and Q is false. In other words, exactly when it is sunny and I am not riding my bike. So that is the negation of the conditional statement. It is sunny and I am not riding my bike. Now to verify that these actually are negations of one another, we can write them in symbolic form and then form truth tables. For the first statement, we can write, it is not the case that if it is sunny, which is P, then I am riding my bike, which is Q. We're claiming that that's equivalent to the second statement, which is, it is sunny, which is P, and I am not riding my bike, which is not Q. In order to prove that these are equivalent, we can make a truth table for the left-hand side and show that it's exactly the same as the truth table for the right-hand side. So let's start with the left-hand side. First of all, we fill in the truth values for the conditional statement, which are found in the third column of this table. We have true, false, true, true. So the negation of that would be false, true, false, false. Now we go to the right-hand side. We know that P is true, true, false, false. Next, we know that Q is true, false, true, false. So the negation of Q will be false true, false true. Then finally, we need to form the conjunction. Remember the conjunction is true only when both parts are true, and that occurs in the second row only. So the second row is true, everywhere else will be false. Now notice that the truth table for the left-hand side is identical to the truth table on the right-hand side. So to find the negation of a conditional statement, we leave the first part the same, we find the negation of the second part, and then form the conjunction of those two things. Now I don't know about you, but to me, it's not intuitive at all that the negation of a conditional statement should be a conjunction. What I remember from a previous lesson is that the negation of a disjunction is a conjunction. Remember that not P or Q is equivalent to not P and not Q. This was one of De Morgan's laws. Now we're used to reading this from left to right and thinking about distributing the negation through the parentheses, but if we think from right to left, we can in essence factor out the negation symbol. We factor out the negation symbol, then we just put the negation of everything inside. The negation of not P is P, the negation of and is or, and the negation of not Q is Q. So let's apply that strategy here and see what we get. We'll factor out the negation and then take the negation of each part. The negation of P is not P. The negation of and is or. And the negation of not Q is Q. So what we see is that the negation of the conditional statement is also equivalent to the negation of a disjunction. That means that the conditional statement is equivalent to this disjunction that's inside the parentheses here. So another important property to remember is that if P then Q can be written as a disjunction. We take the negation of the first part, leave the second part the same, 
and then form the disjunction of those two. And these two statements are equivalent to each other. So applying that up here, if it is sunny, then I am riding my bike is equivalent to it is not sunny or I am riding my bike. 